This episode of the New Hampshire Business Show is sponsored by Everlasting Capital. If you're a small business and you need money and a bank won't give it to you, Everlasting Capital is here to help. In as quickly as a couple of days, you can have the funding your business needs for new equipment or anything else you can need the capital for. So submit your application today and see how they can help you out. Hello everyone and welcome back to the New Hampshire Business Show. My name is Chris Pastrana and today we're here with Monica Drout of Emlyn Assistant. That's it. Okay. I was like, oh, I never asked how to say it before. <laughs> oh, sure so, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Good. So let's get started. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself in the business. Well, uh, I'm originally from New York. That's okay. where I was born and raised. Uh, I grad- I went to school there for television production. I had my master's degree in that. Um, after I graduated, I think, what was it, 2009, we moved to New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in the production gig for about two and a half years for a small production company right here. Um, it was a great experience. It was awesome. Um, but then I found out I was having a baby, and babies change a lot of things. And yeah. after I had my 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 first son, um, the production life is wasn't for me because long hours. Sometimes I wasn't home for days on end doing production stuff. So I decided to nix it and focus on something else. Took a bunch of odd jobs. I was a receptionist for a while. Um, did some data entry for a small company here, and then a couple what was it. 2017 rolls around, I'm pregnant again, and I didn't like where I was at my job. Um, I didn't like where I was working, so I kind of saw this opportunity to kind of branch out and do something else, and that was kind of a rough year for us. My husband lost his job that year, too, so we were really, really strapped for money, and I knew that once I had the, my baby, my second baby, I didn't want to go back to my job, and what were we going to do? So I decided to look into working from home, yeah. look into a bunch of different options, did a bunch, I did transcription for a while, I was doing um, like odds and eds data entry, search engine optimization tests, things like that. And then I stumbled upon the virtual assistant world and I took a course on how to mm-hmm. become a virtual assistant um, and then started my business. My son was born in September of 2017. I started my business in November. I probably should have waited a little bit longer. <laughs> um, I was just really eager to get started. Yeah. Um, and at first I did everything. I did like admin stuff and all, you know, the stuff that associated with virtual assisting. And then I stumbled upon a Pinterest course on how to become a Pinterest virtual assistant. And I never thought of doing that before. And I thought, why not? I wasn't a huge user of Pinterest, but I thought it was a great opportunity to learn something new, so I took that course as well. And then in January of 2018, I grabbed my first Pinterest client online, and the rest is history. I've been specializing in Pinterest management um, for about a year and a half now. I also do production stuff too. I do video editing um, as well for my business, but I work from home. I get to stay home with my kids. Um, right now, last year, I actually matched the salary that I made from my previous job, yeah. so it's it's going good. and. Hopefully it keeps growing. That's good. That's a big risk. Yes. Just from that, your story, like that's a lot of risk that you took on. It was. The first three months were super hard. I think I made $50 in three months and I was like so depressed and like, it's not going to work for me. It's like I was putting all this time and, and energy into it and it wasn't, nothing was coming from it. But yeah. there are so many, it's crazy how when you like step into a new, like try to do something new like the, the new world that you walk into, there's so much support out there and there's so many great people I've met along the way on this online journey that um, so much people want to encourage you and help you out. So I'm thankful for that because they really kicked me in the butt to get it done. And then eventually I, it did happen. So just got to keep at it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So what is a virtual assistant? You kind of mentioned it. Um, we'll delve in a little bit of that and then jump into Pinterest a bit. Yeah, so a virtual assistant is basically someone who works remotely. Um, usually they're associated with like doing like um, administrative work, like data entry, spreadsheets, setting appointments, um, travel arrangements, things like that. Um, it's a very broad term because there's so many different things you could specialize in as a virtual assistant. Um, the, the main stuff, like I said, is usually like admin stuff, but there's also other things as well. People do... Um, like social media management, something you can do um, work from home from virtually online. Transcription, as I said before, a lot of people do that. Um, people do all sorts, they do like business management set up for online businesses. So there's tons of different things you can do, work you can do from home, you can do remotely. Um, that's basically what a virtual assistant is. Okay, cool. And then, so let's jump into the, you said you were Pinterest kind of specific? Yeah, one, one of my main services that I focus on is Pinterest mm-hmm. management. So, um, Pinterest is a 
as many of you know, like a, it's I kind of characterize it as like a visual search engine. It's not technically social media. Everyone thinks it's social media, but a lot of people don't realize how much you can utilize it for marketing. Mm -hmm. um, it's, so it's basically a search engine, just like Google, just like Bing. It's run the same way as a search engine. Um, so it's a great marketing tool for all types of businesses. Um, so no matter what you do, whether if you're like a blogger or a coach, or you have like an online store selling like, you know, your crafting or whatever it may be, um, you can use Pinterest for your business for marketing purposes to get your content out there for social media, for driving traffic to your website, getting email signups or whatever you want to do. Um, it's a great tool to use um, just to, to get noticed. And there, um, there's a lot of communities around there as well. You can connect with other people in your like-minded niche, whatever you specialize in. Um, so as a Pinterest manager, I basically... Um, I set up accounts, um, I set up automa automated scheduling for them, um, I create the content for them for Pinterest, um, they have specific guidelines you should need to follow or like the best way to optimize your, your content for the platform, so I do that as well. I also do analytics reports, so every month I go in and take a look at all the numbers, see and, and devise strategies like that for them for the next month and so on and so forth. And also, they also have like Facebook and Instagram that do ads and promoted prom promoted pins, which are basically like ads for Pinterest. So I do those as well. So it's kind of an all encompassing, um, marketing yeah. platform. Okay. That's pretty cool. I'm actually really interested in this. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Cause I specialize kind of in Facebook. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm very familiar with Facebook marketing, never dealt with someone on Pinterest. So this is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm very interested. Um, so what's that, you kind of said it can be for any business, but there are some that really specialize on Pinterest, or is it really just pretty much good for everybody? Pretty much anything can go on. Um, the, 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 the big ones, like the big topics on Pinterest, like if you have to do with like, like a lot of, because most users on Pinterest are female. It's catered to like a female audience, but the male audience is growing and a lot more people, a lot more guys are signing up for Pinterest in the last couple of years. They've been seeing a big increase in, in, in like, um, men run business and things like that, but it could be anything. Fitness is a big thing on there. Mm. Um, recipe, cooking recipes. If you're a cook or do like a recipe blog or something like that, that is a huge place for Pinterest. Um, DIY things like that. Marketing and marketing strategies. There's lots of, I'm on Pinterest as well as a lot of other virtual students that I know that do like, um, specialize in finance and specialize in social media management and they write articles or blog posts and they put it on Pinterest. It's basically for you could, it could be anything. The only things that people that might have a little bit of trouble in there is like um, brick and mortar stores mm -hmm. because it's a more broader, you know, it's space. If you have a brick yeah. and mortar, it's harder to target. They have ways you can target your, like your, your area if you just want to target like a single area, but it's, it won't be, as, unless you offer something online, like you sell things online yeah. as well, it's not really going to help you as much if you have like a, just a brick and mortar store that sells clothes outside of your store. Okay. But that's like the only, it's like such a small thing there's so much more you can do with it so yeah all right that's pretty cool um so how does pinterest compare to some of the other forms of marketing out there um pinterest is actually the third largest marketing platform on oh. the internet um facebook is number one uh then youtube and then pinterest and i think uh, youtube, and, youtube and instagram i think are pretty close yeah and then um and then hmm. pinterest so it's the third i think it's the third largest marketing platform on there um, for, and it's growing. And this year they're actually going public this year. Um, oh. so that's going to open up a whole bunch of new doors for, yeah, definitely. for, um, businesses and stuff like that. So on all the big name brand businesses you do too, like you see like JC Penning on there and all these other th places like that, they market on there as well. Yeah. Huh. So it's pretty clear. Most people are probably missing out on these opportunities because they have no idea. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still, you still have to keep up with it. Um, and there's not some, it's, it's less of a social, there's still some social media things involved with it. Like you can still comment on people's content and follow profiles, but those numbers don't really matter as much as the amount of content you have out there, who's seeing the content and just like, you know, um, doing like the SEO and something like that, optimizing that, that's the more yeah. important. So there's still tiny aspects of social media esque things on there, but for the most part, it's, it's a search engine for, yeah. for marketers. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm yeah, at least I'm super interested in this right now. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to ask. I know so little about the platform. Yeah, I mean, com <laughs> compared to, I mean, for me, um, like I'm on, I'm a big Facebook user for my business. That's where yeah. I get a majority of my of my networking is through there. Um, but Pinterest is just a lot of fun. Like if you're a really creative person, it's a great way to just, you know, because it's visual. So you can do so many things with creating content for it. Um, 
you can infographics really popular video they just introduced video last year you could do vi video ads and things like that oh, so wow. they're really they're really like just exploring all new options this is growing so much and um going public is going to be a big a big thing for them this yeah, year so definitely cool so since i've probably beat pinterest to death in the last couple of minutes um <laughs> what are some other things you do you said you still do some video production or some production yeah. type stuff mm -hmm. i do video and podcast editing as well and i do content repurposing which is basically taking your old content that you have um and turning it into something new so if you have like let's say an article you wrote like two years ago i basically go take that article i take stuff from it and i create either graphics from it i create um, you can create audio video from it different ways you can utilize that content so you can so it's brand new and you can share it with with your audience or whatever you want to do with it that's pretty, pretty good yeah yeah because i know a lot of people don't do that yes <laughs> and it's it... a big thing a lot of people i remember i did um like a poll once online i said like what's the biggest struggle you have with content people say not enough content but really if you've been doing say you have a business you've been doing it for like a year and a half you have tons of content you can use and just repurpose it recycle it um, especially since video is so big now online, yeah. like if you have like 10 videos that you recorded last year, you can take those, cut them up and use them for different things. You can use it for, you can make posts from it for social media. You can use it as audio clips. You could use it as, um, put it in like a, cut it up and put it in like, make like a mini, like a mini course or something like that out of it. So there's tons of different ways you could utilize your old content to create something new. Um, and a lot of people just don't have the time and energy to think of those ways. So that's what, that's when I come in and try to think of ways to best use do that for you so. yeah that's really cool because um yeah because i've run into that a few times before with other clients where i'm like you need to put out more like yeah you're, you're not doing anything and like well i don't have time to do all this and yeah. I'm, like, I'm like oh my god come on you're killing me yeah Just, and i get it it's it's hard because we t time is never on our side right yeah. so it's it is really hard to do but um and but there are, it's really really fun to i mean I'm, I'm a very creative person so that's why i love doing yeah. that that kind of stuff so i just kind of help them like okay you can do this this and this with this or how about we do this with it with it and yeah that gives, gives them some fresh ideas so it keeps so you don't have to you don't have to think of new content all the time you can take old stuff and and recycle it yeah so. and with the way most search engine uh, social media platforms are anyway when you post something your entire audience isn't going to see it so right. even if you post the exact same thing a couple of times exactly like twitter yeah. is so fast yeah. i think it's like 16 second turnaround so you can post one thing one one week and the next week you can post the exact same thing just word it a little differently and people yeah. won't even know yeah like they won't be none the wiser so it's it's a, and uh, like facebook i think is a little longer but um that's another great thing about pinterest is that the shelf life for pinterest is is really really long like um the half-life of one single piece of content is 3.5 months so you can oh, wow. take that piece of content and just keep recycling it over and over again and um you can like you know redesign the content as well um the, the graphic content as well to refresh it so it's a great way to, to it has a long shelf life so you get you can have something on there from like two years ago you can still be driving traffic to your website yeah so that's that's another great thing about i always think about pinterest things so i just threw that in there <laughs> well it's good like yeah that's, again that's one of the big reasons i wanted you on today is i've never spoken to someone who's pretty any anywhere decent on pinterest like everyone's always talking about again seo facebook yeah and fa I mean, facebook, facebook like that, is the but, king yeah. so like that's of course you want to be on facebook and instagram too if you're if you have a more like visual business yeah. um but yeah get on pinterest it's it's you're missing out on tons of tons of connections tons of traffic whatever you want to do tons of sales if you're looking to to sell stuff online yeah it's just a great a great tool to use yeah absolutely I need to find someone who's good on LinkedIn. I think that's, that's, I think that's a yeah, tough one. Yeah, I need one to have a LinkedIn too, believe me. I've been trying to do that more. Um, but that's becoming really big now too, LinkedIn, is a lot yeah. more people are getting on that. Video is really big on LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, some of my clients I work with are very, very active on LinkedIn. They do videos like every single week, and they have really, really great results from it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just because Facebook's so bogged down. It's kind of almost like Twitter. Yeah, uh, it's like trickling out slowly to other places. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't yeah. even use Twitter anymore. I just gave up on Twitter. I don't use Twitter because <laughs> I'm so focused on just New Hampshire. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense to broadcast to everywhere. That's, yeah, know. that's very true. Like, yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, that's why LinkedIn is, would be good for you too because you can just target New Hampshire people. You would, so. you would think that yeah. if I wasn't so lazy. I mean, we met on <laughs> LinkedIn, but, you know, yeah. since I've been trying to do better at it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's work though because it's also because you don't want it takes a lot of time sometimes to, to learn these things. 
things and what the best strategies are. So yeah, you have to learn a whole new platform. Yeah, and... so it's a little harrowing to think yeah. about. So absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm dragging my feet with LinkedIn too. I'm slowly getting on that boat. I just started like posting like a couple times a week before I didn't post at all. So yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm getting there too. We're, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, oh, that's too funny. Um, yeah, so let's let's get into. I keep getting back to Pinterest, geez. Um, so someone who just gets started on Pinterest, where what should they be doing to kind of like either learn the platform, learn how it functions, or what should they be doing? Um, basically, just go on and use it. Like, you don't have to do it for your business if you want to go on and, like, you know, find recipes to make for the week or mm-hmm. good places to travel with your kids. Just go on there and use it. Um, that's the best way to learn it. Um, and, uh, you know, just see what what's on there that, like, really resonates with you. What, what are some things that that catch your eye. The thing with Pinterest is that it's visual. So you need to have, um, you need to be, have good visual branded content and it has to be, um, something that your audience is going to want to see. So let's say you're in, I don't know, let's say you are just like a marketer, like you say, you Facebook marketing. So you specialize in that and you have tons of articles and blog posts about Facebook and how to, you know, use Facebook ads and, you know, connect with people on Facebook and things like that. Just go on there and search for that and see what comes up and see what catches your eye. And that's, that's the kind of stuff you want to create for yourself. I'm not saying copy it, yeah. but just like see it and see what actually works. Um, and that's a, the best way to learn it. And as far as like the business side of it, um, it's really the same as the personal side, but the, the, the good thing about having a business account, let's say is like you have analytics available to you, you have ads available to you. And that's just kind of like an, um, a get in and try it as well too. Um, there are tons of resources out there. I mean, it's the sky's the limit with resources on how to do this stuff. Um, there's some really awesome influencers in Pinterest as well that have a lot of free resources and to do free webinars and courses all the time um, for people who are learning it. So just kind of get out there and, and, and get your hands dirty and, and then try for yourself. The only way you're going to learn is by trying. That's the best way yeah. to learn, I think. So, um, yeah, it's pretty. It's not that it's not it's not as difficult as it sounds. It seems like a lot. But if you take it step by step, it's not so bad. Yeah, all right, that's pretty cool. So people that want to reach out to you, learn a little more, maybe um, hire you on to handle their Pinterest stuff. How do they get hold of you? You can, well, my website is um, mlynn.com. It's m dash lynn, L Y N N dot com. I'm also on Facebook at mlynn assistant. There's no G at the end, so it's A S S I S T I N. Um, and also, I'm on uh, LinkedIn as well. And I'm also on Instagram, but I haven't been on there forever, so that's probably not the best place to find me. But my website and Facebook are definitely the hot spots to find me. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for coming out today. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. So thank you guys so much for watching. As I said, definitely reach out if you want to learn a little more about Pinterest and how to, you know, actually utilize it for your business for once. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everyone have a great day.